Hello everybody and welcome back to I Fix Old Stuff with your host Thomas Hughes. Today we're going to finish up our three-part series on Pac-Man boards by looking at some bootlegs. There are a lot of these bootleg boards out. As we know, uh, Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man were very popular games and ripe for bootleggers to make a profit. So let's take a look at this board here. This is the first one I've ever got. Uh, this is this is FPM3, which stands for Falcon Puckman. Now, Puckman was the original name of Pac-Man. Uh, when it came to uh, North America, it was, of course, changed to Pac-Man. As you can imagine, I'm sure that many, many marquees and artwork would have been modified by young people. Uh, I won't elaborate any further on what they would have changed it to, but I think you can guess. Uh, in our previous series, we were talking about uh, some of the ROMs that are used on Pac-Mans. Uh, a lot of these boards, use this board here, use 2732s. This doesn't have any ROMs on it. Uh, I've used them for, for other things. Uh, but this had 2732 ROMs uh, across for the program ROMs. And then the character ROMs, as you can see, there's four of them. Well, if you remember from our previous videos, uh, a Pac-Man board usually only has two character ROMs, normally a 2532. On this case, this board is actually set up to use 2716s. Uh, I'm going to do a, a, a video in the future talking about these old ROMs and the size, but I think we can surmise from the math there that a 16 is half of a 32. So what they've done here is they've taken the program or the character ROMs and spread them over four ROMs. Okay. So that's this board. When I got this originally, I got this in a in a cocktail cabinet, an Arctic cocktail cabinet, and it was actually running uh, code from a game, uh, a hack version of Miss Pac-Man called Pac-Gal. And I'll put up a picture here on the screen of that game. Is operators would buy these bootleg boards and put them in generic empty cabinets that you could buy or converted cabinets. And I've seen uh, quite a few of those. I'll put a picture up here of a, of a version. Okay. Another interesting thing I find about these bootleg boards is right here so right here what we have is this is the circuitry for the inputs okay uh, an input needs what this is called is called a debounce circuit when you press a button for instance i'll put a, a button here on the screen when we push a button we would like to think it just goes on and off but it actually doesn't it bounces inside and goes on off on off on off very quickly so this little circuitry here, this is called a pull-up resistor, and we'll do a, a future video on how this works, and then a capacitor to debounce the circuit, okay, to smooth that circuit out so we only get a quick on and off. What you'll see right here, though, is this jumper. And how these boards work, and many arcades boards work, is a specific input. If we ground that input, tie that circuit to ground, it means the, the game recognizes that it should be a cocktail cabinet. Now, in a cocktail cabinet, what happens is when player one and player two switch, the screen rotates. Okay? Of course, because on a cocktail cabinet, one player is sitting on one side and one sitting on the other. The way that we tell the game code that that's what we need to do is we ground this out. A lot of these boards, this is done from the factory. There's no way to... Usually it's done on the harness. As we talked about, we have an edge connector that goes here. There would be a pad, one of these that you would actually ground, and that would signify you're putting it in a cocktail cabinet. These ones here, a lot of them are hardwired for cocktails. Okay. The other thing that's missing too is the test switch. The test switch is usually missing. There's no capacitor, there's no pull-up resistor or anything. And uh, once, once we get through the video, I'll actually show you a board that I modified to add the test switch back in. Okay. So that's a Pac-Man bootleg. Uh, let's take a look at now some Miss Pac-Man bootlegs. Okay, so here's a Miss Pac-Man bootleg. Uh, one thing we'll notice here, now we've got two, three, four, five, six program ROMs and four character ROMs. So if we take a look at the numbers on these, your program ROMs are 2732s. And the last one is a 2716. Again, like we said, obviously a 2716 is half the size of a, a 32. And then on this side here, we've got four 2716s for our character ROMs. You know, again, they, if you watched the previous video, you know this carries the sprites and the maze and so on. An interesting thing to notice about these boards um, is the sound chip. This IC, this integrated circuit right here, is responsible for taking the sound 
and amplifying it so it'll drive a speaker. Notice that they have two sections here. My guess is, is that depending on what chips they could get at the time, they would populate either this side of the board or this side of the board. Okay. We talked about the crystal. There it is here, it's lying down. And here's a repair. Something must have happened to a trace underneath and an operator or somebody has run a jumper here. You'll see that quite a bit on boards or if they had to be modified at the factory uh, for some sort of revision. Okay. Uh, again, here we see the jumper to make this uh, board strictly a cocktail setup. Okay, so if you tried to put this in an upright cabinet, you would have to disconnect that. Okay, so here's another uh, iteration of those boards. This time, we have our 2732s across with a 2716 on the end. But on this one, this is quite interesting, we've got 2532s for our two character ROMs. So how is that possible? How can we have two different ROM versions on the same board? Because I'll put up a little picture here. You'll see that the, the pinout of a 2532 and a 2732 is actually different. Yeah, there are a few pins that are different. I'll put up a picture here so you can see that. And there's more information on the, on the internet about that, and we'll do a future video. Well, what they do is it's called ROM strapping, okay? So let me just get that. What is that? If you see, if you can see these little pads right here, okay, they are next to the ROMs. And what they do is by either cutting the little trace that's here or soldering it across or whatever, will actually allow you to set the board up to use a specific type of ROM, and that's called ROM strapping. I'm going to do a future video on that. Uh, Space Invaders boards were famous for that. They had a lot of different iterations of the ROMs, depending on what they could get at the time. This uh, board has been modded by an operator. If you notice this little board here, this is kind of neat. Okay. So this is tying into the clock circuit in some way, and by changing this pot, you can actually crank the speed of the board way up or way down. That's kind of a neat little mod. I will probably take that off, actually, and repair this board at some point. And on this one, we actually see the sound chip on the other side. Okay, so a different version of the chip. Okay, here's yet another version. Uh, as you can see, it says Pack 1. I'm going to put up a link in the description to where you can find more information about identifying each one of these boards. And like I say, we're going to do a future video where we can take these ROMs out and actually verify what game they're running. On this one here, it's a two-board stack quite interesting. So on this one we've got eight 2716s across the front here. That's our program code. And then on the back we've got our character ROMs, which are 2716. So again, we've got those character ROMs split over four. Okay. So that's an interesting board, the two board stack with this ribbon cable. And as we talked about in previous videos, this ribbon cable at some point will probably die. Although this is a bootleg board, it doesn't really matter. Uh, interesting thing about this board, which I'd never seen before, is two edge connectors. So you've got a 22-pin edge connector here, and then an 18-pin edge connector here. So at some point I'm going to figure out exactly what the wiring is of this one and test it. But that's an interesting one. That's the first one I've ever seen like that. So it looks like it has all of the switches available here, so the test switch and the... Uh, the switch for knowing whether the board is a cocktail or in a cocktail cabin or not is there. So that's an interesting little board. So I believe the when I verified this one, it was a, a hack of Pac-Man called Pack Hearts. I'll put up a picture on the screen here. Next board I'm going to show you. Now we're back to an original uh, Midway Pac-Man board. But as we talked about, when we have a Miss Pac-Man, we have four ROMs, two character ROMs, and then the additional ROMs that we need are connected here to the daughter board. Uh, if you had, don't know what I'm talking about, please check out video number two in this series and you'll see what I mean. I have a few of these boards, and these are quite interesting. What an operator has done, and uh, there are links you can do that you can find this out on the internet on how to do it. I don't suggest doing it. Unless you're going to, you know, you want to find the information to undo this and turn it back to stock. What they've done here is they've added two extra ROM sockets. As we talked about, these ROMs are all in parallel and on what we call a bus. Okay? And there is circuitry on the board that turns the specific chip on at the right time when the processor needs it. So what they've done here is they've added these two extra ROMs. 
let's flip it over. Now notice this board has been stripped for parts. But if we flip it over, you will notice, hopefully you can see that, these blue wires here. Okay, so here, here, here. And what they've done is they've tied these ROMs in to the bus, and these are the chip select circuits that will turn these new these extra ROMs on at the right times when needed. Okay. And you can find that information out on the net pretty easily on how to do that. Like I say, I'm probably gonna I would like to undo that and turn it back to stock. But I see this all the time. And what happens is, you know, instead of buying a, a real Miss Pac-Man board, they would take the old board, modify it, and then they would use bootleg code. Okay. All the boards that I'm showing you today run bootleg code. They cannot run the original Pac-Man code because it's encrypted in some way. Okay. They didn't have the decryption, so they decrypted the code and then hacked the board to run this bootleg code. And I've, I find I'm not a great Pac-Man player, but I do find that the bootleg codes, the ghosts act a little different. So, and I've verified that. There are other people that say that on the internet as well. So, so finally, I'm going to leave you with a, boot, a bootleg board that I actually use for testing equipment. Uh, I have this hooked up to my test rig. And as you can see, it's our six program ROMs and then two 2532 character ROMs. And what I, as I said, these are hardwired for cocktail mode and there's no test switch. So I actually went in and I wired in a test switch. So I can turn that on and off. And uh, what that'll actually give me is when you turn it into test mode, then turn it off and turn it back on again, it will stay on a grid. I'll put up a picture of a, of a grid. And that's very handy for tuning in monitors. You know, if you want to get the, the uh, width and the height right and so on, the convergence and things like that. So I just use this board here. Like I say, I've got a few of them. So, And if this breaks or explodes or something, like I don't care. They're, you know, Bootleg boards are plentiful. So, Good. Well, thank you very much for watching this series. Um, my partner and I uh, were talking the other day, and she was teasing me, saying that uh, every time I go to an arcade event, I always come home with a, a bootleg Pac-Man board, or Miss Pac-Man board. And I said, well, that's a lie. The last one I went to, I came home with three. So there you go. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you uh, like the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.